Hello guys, my name is Dima and this is my first ever tutorial, so please bear with me if I make some mistakes or pauses. Also, I haven't spoken English for about two or three years now, so if I sometimes forget some words, please excuse me. So this is the image that we are going to be cre creating in Cinema 4D. Actually, it's uh, not my original idea. Uh, I saw this image, um, here is the original. Uh, it was posted by Rich Nosworthy. Hopefully I pronounce his name correctly. And uh, thank you Rich for giving me the permission to use your image as reference for this tutorial. Um, actually, if you haven't heard about Rich, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, check him out. He's a very cool guy and shares a lot of useful and inspirational work. So, uh, let's get back to our image. Um, Let's uh, first analyze. The idea um, for this tutorial came when I saw that image um, posted by Rich and I thought um, I would try to recreate it using the skills and knowledge that I have. And this is what I came up with. And along the way I learned some cool stuff, so I decided I would make a tutorial on that. Uh, so we have a bunch of triangles uh, which are shaped uh, in this kind of noisy or terrain-like shape and uh, there are some sticks with spheres uh, on each polygon, on each um, triangle here uh, and some wires, uh, we'll create them using hair and also a studio background. So let's jump back into Cinema 4D and let's get started. This is the final scene that I have, but we will st start from scratch. If you see the grid and want to get rid of it, you can go to filter and uncheck grid here. So let's get started with the plane. We will need... Um, actually I I have already created it so I know the uh, width and height and segments for sure. This will be 800 by 200, uh, 11 by 3. And um, well you can change the settings but the idea here is um, to get this these uh, square segments. You don't have to be perfect, but uh, the more square they look, the more like equal the triangles will be later. So this is looking good. We will make it editable by hitting C or hitting this button here. Uh, let's go into the polygon mode. Uh, Command A or Control A and PC to select all the polygons. Right click and triangulate. Now we have a bunch of triangles, but without gaps. Now, we will create a copy of this plane. So let's go to object mode, command C, command V. And on this plane, we will hide this guy for now. Uh, I hold down Alt and double click on this traffic light. And to create the gaps on the second plane, we'll go back to the polygon mode, <clears throat> command A to select everything, right click, extrude inner, and apply. But we don't have the gaps, uh, we receive some kind of frame here. This is because of the preserved groups. If, if, if we uncheck it, we get the gaps. This is too much, so let's get down the offset to something like 2. This is looking better. Now hit U, I on the keyboard. This is the shortcut for inverting the selection. And let's delete the gaps. Now we are left with some spare points. So let's go to the point mode, command A to select everything, right click, I have this button here for quick, uh, for quick access, if you don't have right click simply and go optimize. And now we, are, we got rid of those points. So now we have um, a bunch of triangles, this is what we wanted, uh, but they are, they are flat, so we will add some depth using Close. So we'll add cloth nerves. By the way, I'm using um, Cinema 4D version 14, uh, if you are interested. So we will drop it here, go to the cloth nerves, and drop down the subdivisions to 0, and thickness let's add something like 3. This is looking good. Now, uh, actually, why I created a copy, mm, a copy of this plane? Let's name it triangles, triangles, 
and this plane will be modifier. Um, I will show you this. Uh, I will show you this uh, right now, so you can see the difference. Um, so why I created and why I chose this method for creating this image. So I will uh, get rid of the cross nerves for now to get this flat. Um, unhide the modifier for now. Let's make actually a copy of it and hide this guy. Hit E for the move tool. Now you see we have here gaps and we don't have gaps here but if you go to display guardian shading lines we can see that um, triangles are pretty much the same but here we have gaps and here we don't have gaps. So if we apply the same modifier we will be using um, displacer. Here it is. Let's drop it here in this modifier and um, well, let's apply some shader, some noise. You can see the deformation happening, but it's subtle. So let's go to the object and adjust the height to something bigger, like 100, something like that. And you see, this creates some um, pretty smooth, uh, well, not smooth, but um, organic motion. Uh, I will apply the same displacer modifier to the triangles with gaps, and you will see the difference. You see, uh, these triangles break down. This is mm, happening because the scale of the noise is not too big in this example. And what is happening is that um, um, the displacer is moving points, actually. And um, these polygons, these triangles are disconnected from each other. So uh, if we go and lower the height here, you see that this point can go up and this point of this triangle can go down and this point goes way down, this way it goes up and uh, this creates, um, it breaks actually the look. We don't uh, have the look like we have here. Like we have here, it's something like um, wave or terrain. And um, here, on the other hand, here, on the other hand, we have this effect. This is happening because all the triangles, all the uh, segments are connected. And uh, this point actually is connected to all the triangles surrounding it. So if it moves, all the triangles move in the same direction and trying to face this point. So to get the same look here, we, we will use uh, a modifier uh, called um, surface. Here it is. And what it does, I will show you in a second. We will delete this modifier. It was for example. And uh, delete this displacer. So uh, we have two planes. One with triangles with gaps. And the other I will unhide it without gaps. You see it here. And um, the target is here uh, to apply, apply all the modifications to this plane without gaps and make these triangles with gaps follow. So we will apply to the triangles with gaps a modifier called surface, drop it on the triangles, and the surface we will use modifier, our plane. Uh, we can unhide the triangles and actually hide the modifier here. And so now we hit initialize, and that is it, now all the uh, deformations and modifications we apply to this plane uh, will be repeating on, on this plane. Uh, now uh, they are like stitched together, so uh, you can imagine that um, this, uh, this plane is laying on this and for example it's, it's like some kind of cloth, yeah? And if you pull this point here, so these triangles align on this cloth, so they will go up here also. So you will see the effect in a second. Let's apply the spacer, apply it to the modifier. Uh, and actually cool stuff about cool stuff about modifiers is that you can layer them as many as you want. You can duplicate some displacers, several of them, apply different noises, different gradients, for example, and get the effect that you're looking for. We'll apply, apply the gradient now. Uh, actually, you know, let's uh, get rid of the font text. We don't need any smoothing here. And um, in the displacer, we will increase the height. 
you can see the effect it's going from black to white black down white up and uh, we will change it actually to circular to do circular gradient and um, you see um, the surface modifier needs some time to update sometimes so if, um, if you make some modifications and don't don't see it update uh, just move the viewport you see jumps it will be happening but uh, hopefully it will not be that big of a problem uh, so this is what we get and actually you know let's turn off the spacer for now uh, let's um, uh, let's make this row, this middle row, a bit higher. So uh, we will go to this modifier, unhide it for a second, go to the polygon mode, uh, hit 9, this is the shortcut for live selection, and select this middle part. Let's move it up a bit, something like this, hit D, and scale it this way to preserve the square shape of the polygons or, or the segments. Something like this, and you see that um, this uh, these triangles repeat all the motions, all the modifications, and it's cool. So we will turn the displacer back on and hide the modifier plane. Uh, now we run into a bit of a problem here. You see, um, it deforms not only in y on the y axis but also on z. This is happening because uh, in the displacer under the object we have direction set to vertex normal and we moved uh, the vertices now they are facing uh, this row uh, directions direction is uh, different from this row's direction so we will change the direction under the displacer to planner and change it from x plus to y oops y plus yeah here we go and now you see from the top view we preserve the rectangular shape and all the deformations are happening only on Y axis. And this is what we want, but we want the opposite. We want this middle part to go up, so we will invert the height. Something like this, and also maybe change it to intensity. Here, and this is looking a bit better. So something like this. And let's now apply some noise. So let's duplicate this displacer, go to shading and change shader to noise. Let's play with the noise settings, let's change this to something like turbulence, this kind, for example. Let's increase the global size to something like 1200. You see jumps, need some time to update. Let's increase maybe the contrast a bit and go to the displacer objects and make the height positive this is looking good let's turn on close nerves to see uh, it's actually with depth on the triangles and this is looking good well you can layer some several displacers you can add another modifiers and cool stuff about it is that uh, there are several ways to animate this also. You can, for example, animate the noise itself. In the noise settings, you can go to animation speed. Hit, for example, 1 here, hit play, and now you're animating this stuff pretty easily. Also, mm, displace modifier has fall off. So, for example, if we don't know if we don't want noise on all the surface, we can uh, constrain it or actually limited to a particular part of this plane so we'll go to fall off and choose sphere for example and you see um, that we increase in scale here we go and we'll make it visible you see where this fall off, this sphere represents fall off where the fall off is happening, the noise is happening and there is no sphere, the sphere does not intersect with plane here so there is no noise and you can also animate this sphere and create something like this. Well, there is a whole lot of possibilities with this technique. But uh, we are creating the still image, so we will get back to inf infinite. Uh, we turned, yeah, we turned off the animation in the noise. 
and this is what we get looking pretty good so uh, now we will add some sticks actually you know um, this um, um, this surface modifier works um, it requires a lot of uh, RAM uh, I believe and sometimes uh, when you get some, like pretty complex your machine uh, can start slowing down and uh, this can happen with my machine because I don't have a very powerful uh, laptop um, it's pretty old so I will actually go to the triangles right click and get uh, current state object and uh, I will get rid of those modifiers so we don't um, load my RAM that much so we now, now um, what we did we actually made uh, all those transfer transformations and modifications into a like single geometry solid one we cannot change it uh, anymore but uh, for the purpose of this tutorial I showed you everything I wanted to show and we are creating the still image so let's uh, let's continue uh, let's get the stick let's hide this guy for now uh, let's create a stick this will be a simple cylinder let's get it the radius is something like 1.5 pretty thin and the height is something like 20 maybe more maybe 30 let's get a sphere here we go let's get the radius down to 3 or maybe 4 and move it up on the stick now let's select both of them alt G on the keyboard uh, to group to create a group let's call it stick now uh, with it selected hold down alt go to mograph cloner and it automatically uh, has been added to the cloner as the child so in the cloner we will change the mode to object because you remember we need um, the sticks on every uh, every polygon every triangle here so and uh, as the object we will use triangles now notice that we are using uh, triangles but not the closed nerves if you uh, apply actually closed nerves we will run, we will run into a problem where uh, you see the closed nerves adds depth and um, it actually adds extra polygons so uh, for example, if we go into cloner now, we will actually be using distribution, not vertex. You see, uh, the sticks are now on vertices. We will use polygon center. And you see now, uh, uh, all the sticks are in the center of every triangle. And um, it's facing the wrong way, so we'll go to transform, minus 90, to make it face the right direction, yes. And on the Z, we will move it up a bit so they are not intersecting it's looking good we get some some kind of a hedgehog here something like this let's actually go to gradient shading and um, or voodoo you know voodoo doll something like needles in it uh, now uh, why we don't use um, the cloth nerves uh, as the object in the cloner this is because uh, you see we now if we turn off close nerves, we get uh, these flat triangles and every triangle has a stick in it. But if we apply close nerves, actually, it will get sticks on all these extra polygons that it creates, on this back and on this side, on this side. So we don't want that, so we applied triangles. Actually, uh, the hairs will be applied also to the triangles. Uh, this way, um, we will limit the hairs also. Uh, only to this top part actually we can yeah actually we'll go and create hair right now so let's um, check triangles geometry here and go to simulate hair object at hair now we have added hair hairs you see that uh, they are also distributed um, on the vertices let's change it here uh, on on the object uh, called hair we will go to guides and here root we will change from per, um, polygon vertex to polygon area 
this will distribute them randomly on the polygons. We will change the length to something like 400. This creates a lot of wires, a lot of, hair, of hairs. Uh, we will drop down the count to something like 80. And uh, in the hairs, um, we have the count of hairs 5000. This will be too much. We will lower this down to the actual count of guides. This is 80, so there will be single, um, single hair on single guide. Uh, now, if we hit play, they're falling. And this is looking good. Uh, well, actually, I want them to be maybe less less or more stiff, I don't know. Um, by increasing the, the number of segments in guides, so uh, you see by default we have 8, and this is what it creates. Actually, let's make... let's increase uh, the number of frames to 300, so we have a lot of room to play and simulate. You see, the, um, uh, I think this is called stiff, yeah? So they are um, a lot. Um, they are very stiff here. So to make them less stiff, we'll increase the number of segments to something like, for example, 16. Now you see they are acting more like actual hairs. I don't know. Well, acting less stiff. Uh, we run into a bit of a problem here. We are starting to intersect with them um, this geometry. And actually what I want, uh, I will create a studio and I want these hairs to glide with the floor here down. So let's fix this. Let's create a studio, studio first of all. Let's create a plane. And drop it down to some somewhere like here, I believe. And uh, hit T, shortcut for scaling. Scale it up a bunch. And go up here, scale it something more. Let's drop down the number of segments to zero. Actually one, one by one. Uh, and uh, hit C to make it editable. Hit T once again for scaling. We'll go to the object mode and scale this up this way. Now we will go to the edge mode. Select this edge and we will hit E for moving. If we hold down command or control on PC, you can drag and extract this edge. <coughs> Maybe a bit lower. Now we will select this edge, hit MS, or right click and select bevel. And we will bevel this edge once, and we, uh, the selection stays, so we have two edges selected, and we will bevel them once again, just a little bit, something like this. We are kind of creating even, even polygons here. Now we will apply. If we hold down Alt, we'll hit on hypernerves, and this plane will be added automatically as child of hypernerves. And we get the studio here. And this is looking pretty good. <coughs> now, uh, to make the hairs collide with geometry, we actually need a tag called Hair Collider. Also, let's maybe create a final, our final camera now. Let's make it something like this. Create a camera, right-click on it, signal for view tags, and let's apply protection tag. So now, if we go to the camera, we don't have the ability to move it. Um, well, we won't screw up the view that we chose, that we have chosen. <clears throat> Let's go back from the camera. And now we will select all the geometry that needs... Actually, all the geometry in this scene uh, needs uh, hair collider tag. So we'll right-click, go to hair tags, and choose hair collider. And it adds... Actually, we don't need it on camera. <clears throat> and it adds uh, on all this stuff. Uh, I believe it won't work properly on closed nerves, or, or, or it will. Let's check it. Actually, uh, with hairs, I um, don't have... Um, I, I can't receive very precise, like, dynamics. Uh, if uh, Even if um, in hairs I go to the dynamics, and here in advanced I increase steps and iterations, it actually 
uh, keeps uh, intersecting with these um, triangles here with the floor well, I don't get such problems let's rewind and hit play <coughs> you see here a colliding with the floor but here you see it intersects um, actually the triangles and uh, I have played a lot, I tried increasing the iterations and uh, steps, but it doesn't seem to help if everyone, if anybody knows, uh, sorry, if anybody knows uh, how to fix this problem, which settings to, like, to edit, to play with, then um, please tell me in the comments, I will appreciate it a lot. So, uh, we're getting the final look, plus and minus, what, or what we want, so... Uh, let's adjust, let's hit render to see what we get now something like this uh, you see the problem with hairs, they are looking jaggy the way to fix this um, is go to hair and we are not going to adjust the segments of the spline themselves because this is uh, this will affect the simulation uh, the way to do this is um, to go into hairs and adjust the number of segments here so we will type in something like 40 hit render and you see now they're smooth and nice let's go into into the hair material let's adjust the color let's get rid of the second knot to delete the ramp or gradient here and make it something like this magenta reddish pinkish color something like this adjust also the thickness the tip will make it point so they look more like kind of wires with render this is what you get <coughs> and uh, for the materials for, for the rest of the, of the materials I will actually copy them from my final scene and I will explain to you how I created them they're very very simple so we copy them go go here paste <coughs> so let's start with the gold material and apply it to the sticks it is our cloner and golden material is simply I have only color and reflections activated so color is this golden color 19% brightness and reflection is simply reflection without vernalin here so we have no textures here uh, the brightness is set to something like 82 and the color is this yellowish kind <coughs> and it creates so we don't uh, actually now have uh, what to what to reflect so they look pretty dull but uh, as soon as we add some uh, the sky and add some HDRI they will reflect it and will look nice now uh, let's add material to our plane our triangles <coughs> this is also pretty simple this uh, has some light gray color in color mode uh, in color channel and in reflections we have a fernel and its uh, brightness and mix trends are set pretty low so we don't have harsh uh, reflections but just a bit of them <clears throat> and we will also apply our material to the studio which is this one <clears throat> sorry uh, we will change you see uh, the projection is screwed up so we will choose the material here go to the projection and change it to cubic and you see we have a lot of uh, like repetition styles we will drop them down to maybe 0 0.25 by 0 0.25 and this is I think looks better <coughs> let's go into, into the material I will show you it has color bump and specular uh, actually I could use uh, like reflections but um, it would take I believe a bit longer to calculate I just wanted some mm, effects uh, like the light heat in the background so I just use specular is uh, actually like fake re re fake reflections so this is what I used and one more thing to be noted is that um, Rich actually used V-Ray for Cinema 4D to render this scene and uh, I used um, a built-in physical renderer to get this effect uh, actually, I recently got V-Ray for Cinema 4D, but I didn't have enough time to uh, get acquainted with it enough to 
like to teach you something and to use it properly and flawlessly. So uh, I will use actually I used um, uh, physical renderer and um, the cool the cool stuff about physical renderer is that uh, you have presets here. So if you go to physical, choose it. We have sample quality, and if you choose medium, this um, most of the times this is pretty pretty much enough for rendering a pretty good scene, which will be uh, noise free and uh, pretty smooth. But if you want to go more in depth, there are a couple of tutorials online on physical uh, renderer, which well, if you want, you can learn how to optimize it the way you want. Uh, now for this material, this is uh, the material of concrete. In color I uh, loaded a texture. Actually I found this texture uh, watching the tutori tutorial by Curse Studio, uh, where he, he was teaching how to uh, like light the exterior scene using V-Ray for Cinema 4D. Uh, and I believe he found those textures on Flickr. So this is simply the texture. I will open it in separate window. The texture of uh, concrete blocks. You see them here. And in bump channel, it has um, the same texture, just black and white. Open it up, black and white, to create some illusion of depths. So like separations and these dots. And specular is set to plastic. 75 widths, height 15 and 0 fall off to create just a bit um, of um, illusion that it reflects the light reflects something and this is all, we applied everything let's um, add several lights, let's go actually into our camera mm, we haven't moved so it doesn't change I will be using Grayscale Gorillas Light Kit Pro we will add overhead softbox and softbox we go to object manager here actually didn't add softbox double click yep now let's change settings for the overhead softbox we will uncheck scene by camera and we will increase the brightness to something like 150 <coughs> and this softbox Let's actually go out of the camera to see where this salt box is. So it is here, it's pretty small, so uh, let's actually increase it. Increase its size, overall scale, and set it to pretty much pretty high values here, like 300, and increase the distance. Something like this. Change the color to make it a bit of a yellowish to create some variation in lighting in lighting orange like and drop down the brightness to 90% maybe and let's uncheck scene by camera here now let's duplicate it, command C, command V move it in different direction, you can use this dot or just use these values, I will move it on X uh, to get the different position for it let's place it somewhere like from the back a little bit it won't be seen in the render because we unchecked scene by camera and change the color to something like maybe this purple bluish like something like that well, let's decrease the distance to a little bit closer maybe and actually decrease the brightness to something like 60 maybe 70 and this is looking better now let's be get back to our camera uh, let's uh, render with the standard to see what we get a kind of preview of what we get and you see now that we have lights we start to see uh, the gold a bit better And actually, one thing I forgot to do, I wanted to add um, the sky object to get some overall like atmosphere and reflections. So let's do this. Let's add sky object. Get new material, apply it to the sky. Go into that material. 
uncheck color and specula we will be using only luminance here and let's go to the desktop I actually have this HDRI I found online now we can hit now it needs some time to load it because it's pretty huge it's in the photo of some night city I really like it we'll go inside and uh, change the color profile to sRGB and maybe increase the exposure a bit something to <clears throat> or maybe 1.5 and let's hit render once again And I think we have a little too much like, yellow light here, you see. So we will maybe increase the brightness of the second soft box, which is purple bluish. Make sure make it darker and increase the brightness to something like 100. Here, hit random. Well, I think this is looking pretty good. You see that my computer, it takes my computer a lot of time to calculate even with the standard renderer. So uh, I will only show you the settings uh, for the physical renderer in my final scene. So let's jump back into it. Let's jump back to my final scene here. And my final settings were like I think I adjusted some settings here, but I started, I believe, with the medium sampling quality preset here. And uh, I enabled also indirect illumination to get some light from the HDRI surrounding it. And uh, you can see the final result here. It took actually, um, I believe, one and a half hour to render this image. Well, mm, I think this is it. That's all that I wanted to tell you about. Hopefully it was not that bad. If you have any questions or uh, any suggestions for the future tutorials, well, write in the comments or write to my email. Uh, I will try to answer you and help you if you have some problems. Now, once again, thank you, Rich, for giving the permission to use your image for reference. And I think that is all, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.